Okay. I did my research project on how rhetoric creates exclusivity and environmentalism. My initial research was about the effectiveness of certain rhetoric, why some people don't support environmentalism, and if rhetoric can be used to gain support. <clears throat> As my research progressed, my question turned into, is there a connection between the rhetoric and environmentalism and the people who support it? I found out that the exclusive rhetoric used in environmentalism excludes minorities and the working class and poor. Environmentalism has changed a lot over the years. In the 30s and 40s, it was about conservation and recycling. In 1962, Silent Spring was published. In 1970, it was the first Earth Day and the EPA was formed. In 1972, it was the Clean Air Act. In 1989, it was the Global Warming Scare. And in 1993, the environmental movement died down. Environmentalism in the 70s was about defending wild places, having clean air and water, controlling the pollution, and controlling the population. Environmentalism today is about domesticating wild places, sustainability, and maintaining the high standard of living while causing less environmental degradation. Environmentalism in the media. Uh, stories usually happen when environmental crises are already obvious, and the effect of that is that the stories will often die once the effects of a crisis are no longer apparent. Human interest determines news. Uh, this leads to a variable mythologizing of science, or turning science into a relatable story instead of presenting facts. Um, the media usually focuses on the present, and this leads to an inaccurate and untimely representation of environmentalism. Uh, the rhetoric used in environmentalism is very exclusive. Many people view it as a rich white social issue. Um, any effort to make subject matter relevant to an audience involves a parallel attempt to create a foundation of shared values. So I decided to research the values of both environmentalism and Americans. Uh, the core values of environmentalism are ecology, sustainability, and health. And the core values of Americans are independence, economy, and equity. The core values of environmentalism can conflict with each other and often conflict with the values of most Americans. In the 60s and 70s, there was a racist element to environmentalism. Uh, it gained popularity at the same time the civil rights movement began. Minorities were used as a scapegoat for pollution and overpopulation problems, and minorities were depicted as having no interest in the environment. There's a divide between the races and environmentalism. Um, this is caused by different lived experiences. Most minorities grow up in poor areas and whites, and this leads to two different ideas of nature, which leads to two different visions for environmentalism. And social justice is usually ignored in decision making, which leads to minority groups overlooked in environmentalism. The poor and working class and environmentalism support fell in the 60s when environmentalists did not take a strong stance on automation and outsourcing, both issues that affect the average American citizen. The exclusion is caused by job security and destructive businesses such as oil, logging, and construction, uh, employers blackmailing their employees to oppose environmental legislation, and sustainability can be really expensive. Some possible solutions are using an all-inclusive rhetoric to unite the population, addressing the environmental issues affecting the poor and minority groups, jobs in a green economy that use union labor and proper media coverage and environmental education. A quote from Edward P.J. Corbett is, one fact that emerges from a study of the history of rhetoric is that there is usually a resurgence of rhetoric during periods of violent social upheaval. And environmentalism is the social issue that needs to be in the limelight. It will affect everyone and everything on this planet. If we don't unite to combat environmental degradation, we will lose our world. And that's it. <laughs>